right, folks, back to our Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. Now, look, I'm a tech person. I love being able to email stuff and PDFs, you name that. But also, there are times when I have fans who want me to actually personally autograph a photo, which means you got to print it out. Freeprints.com gives you 1,000 4x6 prints every single year straight from your phone for free. You can print photos from Instagram, Facebook, and other sources. Now, very simple. You only pay a small shipping charge, no subscriptions or commitments ever. You can also get other size prints, and the photos are great quality. Now, I know some of y'all might be saying, okay, that doesn't happen. Well, when I went to the White House, one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, ushers there wanted me to autograph a photo. We took a picture, but she didn't have an email, and she, I had to also go to a store, print a photo out, out, sign it and mail it to her. Well, with freeprints.com, I can send the, I can print it right there from my phone. It'll be shipped to me. It's the number one rated photo printing app in the world with more than 100,000 five-star reviews. It's available for iPhone and Android. Download for free freeprints.com and be sure to put in there what you heard about it. Just say Roland. Now it's back to your Roland Martin unfiltered video. Uh, because if you look at you look at every single what preceded every single one of those civil rights bill in 64, 65, and 68 were actually race riots. 68, you were coming off of 1967, the Kern Commission report, Dr. King's book, Where Do We Go From Here, also dealt with that whole issue. All those riots were, were preceded by police brutality. And so what, one of the issues that they were protesting was exactly what NFL players are protesting, police brutality. I, I think that it would be a bit disingenuous to say that John Carlos and Tommy Smith were protesting police brutality. I'm sure that was p quite possibly part of it, but... No, not possibly. That was one of the issues. I, I, I would say that, you know, at that time, segregation was still in full effect. There were still laws, I think, in effect that discriminated against us. Sure. As it relates to police brutality in 2018, Roland, uh, the government <clears throat> is highly motivated to try to prevent police brutality. Which government? The American government. But which one? Yes. Most, yes. Most yes. Many, they're all because wrong, this is we're in a capitalistic society. When these deaths happen, there are government pay the taxpayers get taxed. There's right. million dollar settlements, things like that. The government is has great enthusiasm to stop police brutality because it costs money. But they but, but they don't. Let me finish. The government is very enthusiastic about incarceration. What the government wants is to politely take people to jail and prisons. That's a money-making venture. The government has no interest in a handful, 20, 100, 200. They don't have an interest in two or 300 people getting killed by the police. It's a money loser for them. Right, but, but, that's, but if you have New York, if you have the city of New York, where they spent nearly half a billion dollars in settlements over a decade. Right. You look at the same thing in Chicago. The reality is those things are continuing. You look at what happened in a, in a, in a city, city in Michigan. You had a police officer who pulled a black man over, planted drugs on him, beat him, had to raise taxes to pay the settlement. The reality is you're still seeing the payouts. You're still seeing the settlements, multi-million dollar settlements. I get it, but Mo, Roland, there's no job where people operate in perfection. There's, there's just no job. And police have a very difficult job. They're underpaid, they're undertrained. Uh, we're in the most armed society, perhaps in the history of the planet in the world. Anytime you have a society this armed, there are going to be mistakes made. And again, do we overlook them? No, I'm not saying overlook them. But to sit here and pretend like, because it's popular over Twitter, that there's an epidemic of police killing uh, African Americans or just Americans in general, it's just not true. Well, it has nothing to do with Twitter. The reality is this here. First of all, I don't say somebody being shot and killed is somebody not being perfect or a mistake. That's death. No one can return from death. I would, I would, I would I surmise. It. Well, I can't get into, it's, it's disingenuous to get into some emotional conversation or illogical death conversation. Death is not emotional. Again, you're, you're running around with buzzwords. I'm talking about this conversation of trying to pretend like the police and the government have any interest in any citizen getting killed. They don't. They're highly motivated because of their real plan is mass incarceration. It's not killing people in the street. Yes, it's not. such a small number, and, and I get it. But in this society where gun violence is this prevalent, there are going to be mistakes made by the police. Just like <laughs> and so, yes, yes, There's a difference between mistakes being made. And when you have, first of all, I've covered C government. 
Gotcha. I'll cover county government. Gotcha. Uh, I've actually been in the room uh, when uh, politicians were having to deal with these issues. The reality is this. When you have cases, numerous cases, not a handful, when you have numerous cases that, first of all, run the gamut, the city, the city of Cleveland is on their second consent decree in a decade. When you look at when Mitch Landry became mayor of New Orleans, he called in the Department of Justice uh, to look at that, that, that police department that had decades of corruption. Ramsey was the police chief in uh, Philadelphia. He called in DOJ. Same thing. We know, of course, the history of Los Angeles and the history in New York. And so this is not just a matter, I believe, of players protesting just in case of somebody being shot and killed. It's also those folks who are being beaten. When you have Chicago cops, in the case of Laquan McDonald, who, first of all, lied, flat out lied. Then you had cops who went to the Burger King with had surveillance video and erased the video. They actually erased the video. Then they all lied and covered for each other. That, 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 and then there are multiple cases in Chicago. John Burge, who just died, of course, uh, beaten, tortured up to 40 black men. That, that's not mistakes. That, that is culture. Do the police have a culture of excessive force? Perhaps they do and probably they do. Does our, is our government highly motivated to try to prevent it? Absolutely they so are. Why it? Because we're not in a perfect society. People make mistakes. They hire the wrong people. It's hard to have a perfect culture. We just, no, there's it's there's no perfect. job. It's like a doctor. Doctors make mistakes right. all the time. People driving cars make mistakes and kill people. People shoot and kill each other because they're making mistakes. They get too emotional. They're too filled with hatred, whatever. Human beings are flawed and they make mistakes. And so, roll it out. I get it. The, a lot of this stuff plays great on Twitter. No, and, it's, and it's, and it's, but, but for it's me, it's Twitter. But for it's me, it's Twitter. It's Twitter. Because, because I'm aware most black media people and most media people in general do everything to build their Twitter brand and protect their Twitter yes, followers. This has nothing and that's to do with where Twitter. their passion as, comes as from. As somebody who has someone who run great black newspapers, bro, before Twitter existed, this was an issue. And as someone who has buried a family member because of police misconduct, someone very close to me and my family, I get the emotion when the police misconduct. I, I, I helped raise a relative who was killed by police. I get it. But the solution isn't this, we're going to monitor the police over Twitter or through Twitter and point out every example of what's going on with the police when they do wrong. That's not the solution. So what's the solution? The solution is we have to acknowledge the government is already motivated to prevent police violence and police misconduct because it's a money loser and we're in a capitalistic society. The issue that we have here has been the over-criminalization of poor people, and mass incarceration is actually the problem. The hot-button issue that will get you on TV and build you a Twitter following is going to run around and micromanaging the police and pointing out everything that they do wrong. If they did that to me or you about things that we do wrong on our jobs, trust me, they can find examples time after time after time. This complete demonization of the police is inappropriate for us because we live in communities where we need the police, we need to recognize the police make very little money, get very little training, they're the common man. If you want to get upset with someone, get upset with the politicians and the government officials who have put laws in place to criminalize the behaviors that go well, on in our poor community. Well, because because we're not doing both. No, actually, here's, here's what's interesting. What's interesting is that, first of all, one reason why we have seen a change in many of those laws is because... Change in what laws? Well, first, first and foremost, uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, you did not have a level of first by the cameras you have now. That's first. Second of all, you also have not had the level of scrutiny of police departments to change practices as a result. One of the issues that you have is you have strong collective bargaining of contracts where you have police, uh, police departments in terms of what they can and cannot do. When you look at Amber Geiger right now in Dallas, who based upon that contract did not have to speak for three days, did not have to actually t say what happened. She could, for three days, she could, she could not say anything, and then a 
according to their contracts, is allowed to present an affidavit that actually was written by a police well, department attorney. Here's, 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 here's the reality of facts. Uh, having been black for 51 years, having my father doing business in the black community my entire life, having grown up in the black community, well, we can focus on the, let's say, 100 mistakes that police make every year. It's more than 100 days. But we know what is going on in our communities and where our children, who are killing our children. And so we can spend all this time Focused on let's demonize the police, let's criticize the police. But you can't say demonize the police, but Jason, if somebody gets killed, if somebody gets killed, and if you have a cop in Chicago, for instance, there's a judge. I don't care who's doing the killing. No, 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 There's a judge in Chicago, for example. There's a judge in Chicago who who, who saw eight cops lie on his witness stand. He reports them to a police accountability board. Nothing is done. This judge comes back and says, they are lying. They're flat out lying. He said, if you're going to be protected and served, and you have a badge and you have a gun, he said, but to sit here and actually lie on the witness stand, I would think if we're about justice, we would, we would say, you know what? We don't need cops who lie. We don't need cops I who mess up. But well, that's just one issue. Here's what I see. We also don't need journalists who take an issue that we're having in the black community, gun violence, and the death of our young people. And for black men, 18 to 24, our leading cause of death is homicide. We don't need journalists who, who say, no, 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 let's focus on this smaller issue that's damaging young black men and ignore this issue and have all the so conversation. You're doing it right now. No, and have all the conversation this about this issue and all the athletes taking the knee about this issue instead of us as black people saying, hold on, we have some issues in our community, there's some things we can do, and there's some things we can ask the government to do, and, and, and again, the government is already highly motivated to prevent police brutality. They're not highly motivated to fix a corrupt criminal justice system that over-criminalizes our behavior well, and that doesn't with mass incarceration. Well, and so Roland, Roland yes, I, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say, Roland, is primarily and what I do for a living is mostly talk about sports. I'm not an expert on the police. I think athletes have gone too far with the virtue signaling and taking a knee. It's an approach that hasn't contributed to anything but a discussion about the national anthem. And so I get it would, it's great for your show and your Twitter following to get a sports writer knee deep in a conversation about the police. No, 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 I, no, no. I'm primarily a sports writer. I can talk about athletes and things like that. I can sit here if I wanted to all day, but it's a distraction and I'm not going to. Well,